Hello everyone. Welcome to Green Nursing. CTG. So finally I'm creating this highly requested video on CTGs. So first of all, CTG stands for cardiotocography. No, this is not an ECG, but it's a CTG, and it's used during pregnancy to monitor the fetal heart rate and monitor uterine contractions. It is most commonly used in the third trimester and can detect fetal distress. Okay, so how do we obtain a CTG? So as you can see over here, we've got two transducers on the pregnant abdomen. The purple one is recording the fetal heart rate and is placed appropriately on the anterior shoulder of the fetus. The pink transducer is monitoring the uterine contractions by measuring the tension of the maternal abdominal wall, which indirectly gives an indication of intrauterine pressure. The mother will also be holding a pressing button to indicate whenever she feels fetal movements. These are all connected to the CTG monitor, producing a graphic representation in the form of a CTG. The monitor displays the fetal heart rate over here and the tocometry measurement here. CTG monitors can also measure the maternal parameters, including blood pressure and maternal heart rate. Great. So, some CTG basics. So, here we've got the graph paper CTGs are printed on. The top trace is the fetal heart trace. The tocometry trace is displayed below. These marks are markers of fetal movements, which are indicated by the mother as she presses the pressing button. Now, every small box on the graph paper represents one minute. The CTG is divided into 10 minute blocks, represented by 10 small boxes. Good, so those are the bare basics. But now, how are we going to interpret the CTG? So first of all, we always keep it structured to make it easier and never miss out on anything. And to do this, we use a mnemonic called Dr. C. Bravado, which stands for Define Risk, Contractions, Baseline Rate, Variability, Accelerations, Decelerations, and Overall Impression. Okay, so starting off with define risk. So essentially here we are assessing the risk factors of the pregnancy. Is it a high risk or a low risk pregnancy? Are there risk factors such as meconium stained lycor, fever or intrauterine growth restriction making the pregnancy high risk? Next, contractions. So here we are taking into consideration the frequency and duration of the contractions. The frequency is described as the number of contractions in a 10 minute period. The contractions appear as peaks on tocometry as you can see over here. So in this case we would say that there are 2 in 10 contractions. It is important to keep in mind that during labor we should aim to have around 4 to 5 contractions in 10 minutes. In this next CTG we can see that here there are 6 contractions in 10 minutes and this is called hyperstimulation which can result in an abnormal fetal heart trace on the CTG as in this case. Next, we've got the baseline rate. And this essentially refers to the average heart rate of the fetus. The normal heart rate ranges from 110 to 160 beats per minute. So in this CTG, the baseline heart rate would be around 140 beats per minute, which is normal. In this CTG, the baseline heart rate is around 175 beats per minute, which is above the normal range and referred to as fetal tachycardia. Causes include fetal hypoxia and chorioamnionitis. In fact, we always check maternal temperature in these cases, because if febrile, this is a further pointer towards possible chorioamnionitis. Good. So next we've got variability. This is also referred to as beat-to-beat -beat variability, which is the variation in the fetal heart rate from one beat to the next. The normal variability range is from 5 to 25 beats per minute. So let's look at this CTG. So basically we're looking at how much the trace is moving up and down along the baseline. 
So this CTG has good beat to beat variability, which is certainly greater than 5 beats per minute. Normal variability indicates an intact neurological system in the fetus and is a good indicator of how healthy a fetus is. In this CTG, however, there is minimal variation in the fetal heart rate between beats, so here we have decreased variability. This may occur during fetal sleep, so as we know, a fetus goes through sleep-wake cycles, and during the sleep cycle, decreased variability may be noted, however, this should not last longer than 40 minutes. Other causes of decreased variability are fetal hypoxia and drugs, such as opiates and magnesium sulfate. Okay, so next up we've got accelerations. Accelerations are defined as an abrupt increase in fetal heart rate by more than 15 beats per minute for more than 15 seconds. Accelerations are a sign of a healthy fetus. In this CTG we can see accelerations over here. Great, so next in our Dr. C. Bravado mnemonic we've got decelerations. To learn more about decelerations, watch my next video. Like and subscribe for more.